so we spent some time this morning talking about, about, about the virus and people's opinions about things. Here's the thing I, I want to emphasize again. Just keep your, make sure you're getting reliable news, reliable facts from reliable sources. Do the best you can, and it'll work out in the end. All right, hopefully everything works out anyway. I was thinking, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if you put it here like this horizontally, that way we can divide this space and that space, and those drawers, you can open those drawers, because you have to open those drawers eventually. So if you set it up here, like perpendicular to the wall, don't worry about the board, if that makes sense. Yeah, turn it, yeah, there you go, like that. Uh, not so far, yeah, that way more. That's good, yeah. I'm just saying, that way you guys can have a space that's your space. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense? Yeah. All right. Uh, we're taking notes now. Oh, let me read. Guys, can we can we focus now? Yeah. Let's get let's get focused up here. On, we got some really big issues to talk about. When we talked about paper chromatography, your lab should just have what you observed. That's all. What you did and what you observed. That's the report. I'm going to have a space for you to upload to by the end of today. And you had put a, a dot of ink here. You had laid out a line here. You, this dot, once you put it in a solvent, and the solvent was alcohol, it was a 95% ethanol is what it was, that this solvent then wicked up using hydrogen bonding and various other intermolecular interactions, soaked up went, hit the ink that was on the paper, and then dissolved the ink and spread it as, uh, spread the ink as a, uh, as a rainbow with different colors depending on the ink that you started with. Uh, the FBI actually has a, the FBI has a, as a database of the patterns of this chromatography for every ink produced in the world. So they have, they have this database of ink one and then the, the rainbow pattern, the spectra. They have ink two and then they have the spectra. And every, every ink is made of different dyes and so they have that for every ink ever made. That makes sense when someone writes a ransom note they can identify the ink type and they can maybe even get to the person who, who owned that, that particular pen. Yeah. How can the ink type determine who, who wrote the note? Because it's multiple ink types of It's a very good point. Uh, it can narrow down the options. It's not, it won't tell you exactly who did it. I, I think that's, that you're absolutely right on that. But what it does do is it says, okay, especially some of the rarer inks, it can tell you where you can find where those pens were sold. They actually can tell you what batch they were sold from, so what stores they were bought from. That kind of, like, the you know the company makes big pens. They sell big pens. All if it's a gener generic big pen, no, you're not going to be able to get much information out of that. But if it's some kind of uh, if like I have tool pens, T U L pens, that ink those are only sold at a specific store. And if I write a note and I live here, then I might have bought that pen there. So the FBI would go look at those stores and see who bought, they look at their, their video camera, who bought that pen in the last month. It's a lot of work, but yeah, they can do that. Especially now with facial recognition software, it's not as hard as it used to be. So who wrote the ink? Uh, uh, you know, that the FBI does keep that database. It's not the only database they keep, but they do. But this is separating molecules. This is the whole point, is you're separating molecules. By how much they stick to the paper. All right, that's it. And so inter by intermolecular bonding, that's all you're doing. That's all you did. And so that's, you write that up, 
any observations you made, turn it in when I make the assignment and you got your credit, okay? No conclusions, no lab, formal lab write-up, none of that. The next lab, this Friday's lab, you will have a formal write-up. So read the syllabus that I sent you. There's details in there. I'm not going to go over it in class right now, but it will be there. Let's talk about these molecules. So far, we talked about this molecule called water, which we said was two hydrogens and an oxygen. And we said these, that this water molecule was polar, so it's a partial positive and a partial negative. Oops, I reversed those. A partial negative and a partial positive side. So you have this, this big old negative side on one side. So this is all negative over here. As a, Slightly negative, not full, not a full-on negative, like an like a, uh, not like a, an ion, like sodium and chloride, but they do have a, a a negative side and a positive side, so they're like it's a magnet. So this is a magnet, and that's why water's sticky because it sticks to things like a magnet, very much like a magnet. So that was water. The thing is that we have these other biomolecules that. We and we discussed, and that you had a biomolecule packet, did you not? Yeah, it was back in the day, uh, it means about a week ago, so that you've forgotten completely about it. Unless you're doing the six R's, then you know everything there is to know about that work because you've reviewed it several times, right? Yeah, <laughs> no. And so, if you don't remember this, if it's not coming, here's, here's what I ask again use your own mind, use your own thinking, use the facts in front of you. If you can't, take a minute and think about it, if you can't remember this quickly in your mind, what does that say to you? Well, I, yeah, that's true, but that's, I don't like the S word. You're not doing the six R's. You're not reviewing it every 20 minutes a day. You're not reciting it, because that's the only problem I have with study, it's not specific enough. You're not reviewing it, you're not reciting it, you're not reflecting. Because if you were reflecting, you would have said, wait a minute, what, what do we do? What, do why, what don't I know? All right, so let's go over this. So when we build biomolecules, who here plays Minecraft? Anybody play Minecraft at all? All right, some people. Who's played with Legos? All right, other, so everyone's either played with Legos or Minecraft. When we... When we build things with Legos or Minecraft, uh, we take little blocks, I think. I've not really played with Minecraft. This is, you're, you're building with blocks, pretty much. You're digging out blocks, you're building with blocks. So we take different kinds of blocks, and there's different sizes. And I think with Legos, re remind me if I'm wrong, tell me. I think Legos, they have different sizes come in different colors. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so you, build, you put them together, and the different... The different blocks make different things. You can make buildings and cars and, and, and ships and whatever. Well, it's the same thing with you. You do the same thing. You do the same thing with yourself. So we're going we're gonna to talk about the building blocks. Of life. Right? So these are, these are literally the building blocks that make up life and make us who we are, but also allow us to do the things that we need to do. There, is, there are a number of functional groups. We call them functional groups. That are going to be very useful to you to get to know. Which means for your sake, what is it, how does that translate for you in your exam? You need to know these. You need to know these functional groups. You need to recite them, you need to write them down. If index cards work for you, great. If online flashcards work for you, fantastic. If quizzes works for you, do it. Make your own. If I'm telling you to use your notes, your Cornell notes, it saves you time, be more efficient. So you don't end up spending 18 hours doing it. If, if rewriting it, like I know a teacher in the building I took a master's class with, she, wrote her, she rewrote her notes 20 times. I personally think that's doing too much, but that's me. If it works for her, great. 
it doesn't work for me. So I do it other ways. Whatever you do, you got to recite these. You definitely have to recite them. And you have to actually review to make sure you're going. So go review with, uh, with someone. And you certainly are going to have to reflect. And the way you reflect is that you try to draw these without looking at anything. And if you can draw them without looking at anything, you're ready to go. Right? So the first one's easy. You covered it already. You talked about it. Hydroxide. And what is hydroxide if you see who's reviewed, recited, reflected? So again, if you're not doing it, then I know a couple kids in the room, we got discussions about note taking. Uh, so, so hydroxide is OH. Just that, that group. It's just a group. These aren't the blocks yet. We're not at the blocks. These are just the parts that make up the blocks. A really important one is this thing called carbox, uh, or, or carbonyl, which is related to carboxyl. So carbonyl looks like this. See, car, a carbon connected to a car to another carbon. So it's connected to whatever. This could be whatever. This is whatever. Uh, just this stuff here, and this is whatever. So I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring that. When you see a line, that, that just means you're getting, this could be connected to anything. All right, so the carbonyl has a double bonded oxygen. So anything that looks like with a C in the middle and a double bonded oxygen, we call it carbonyl. And then there's, I think, one of the more important ones, carboxyl. Carboxyl is, I think, one of the more, really, it's, you're going to see this one a lot. And I'll tell you which ones you need to know for the test. I'll tell you which ones you need to know to the test. So I'm going to introduce you to all of them, but I'm going to, well, all the major ones, and then I'll highlight the ones I'm going to test. And carboxyl is a really important one. So you see the difference. That's why they're named, they're, the names are so close, because it really is a C double on O, but then they add an OH to it. That's, that's that. This is another really important one. And I'd like to know if I, I, sometimes I feel like getting up and walking around the room and seeing who's actually, when I say this is a really important one, who actually put an asterisk by it or, or highlighted it or whatever. This is a really important one here. It's called an amino group. Why do you think this one's important? It'll be in the test. I guess that's a good point. Yeah, that'll be important. Why? What, anybody ever hear of amino acids? No. Nope. You haven't heard of amino acids? Man. Like, eat your amino acids. You need amino acids to build muscle, blah, blah, blah. Never heard that? Yeah, I think, I, I think it's all over the place. So, so amino group is, it, it, an amino acid is this carboxyl combined with the amino group. These two together make an amino acid. We'll look at it in a minute. Uh, the sulf sulfider, who like who has curly hair in the room? I, I have mine's wavy. Mine's wavy until I let it go. If I don't put any, any gel in it, then it'll be very uh very curly. I went camping with my professor in college and and I came out of that we would have to bathe in the in the uh, streams and such because we were in the woods for weeks. I came out of the woods when my hair looked like it had a big afro coming down like this and because it was real long. I didn't have any uh, gel or anything, right? And I'm just walking down, and he's like, I didn't know your hair was like that. It's like, like, it's what it is, man. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. So sulfhydro. Sulfhydro is just, uh, is just what it sounds like, an S and an H, not a big deal. But this is the reason, this is the reason our hair is curly. Any, anybody has curly hair, uh, any, anything from real curly to just wavy, it's, it's how much of this you have in your protein, how much SH you have. Another really important one, so you see there's not just a couple, there's just one, maybe a couple we don't need to put, we don't, you're not going to need to memorize. Another really important one is, is phosphate. Anybody ever hear phosphate? Yeah, it's, it's, in, the, it's in DNA. It's, uh, it's an ATP. It's really important, really, really super important little. It's in rocks. We get it from, uh, it comes from the soil. Uh, 
so all these things you can you can tie it to the earth and then, uh, then the last group is a methyl group and you've seen this one before because I've shown it to you but you may not remember it it's a C and methyl methane is C with four H's a methyl is a C with three H's connected to something this is how you age this is how you turn genes on or off. This is one way you turn genes on or off, is with this methyl group. I see it does do two dots at a time. Somebody couldn't make it do that the other day. All right, so these are the main ones. Uh, honestly, the only one you don't, all of these are gonna be important, uh, but the two that you could maybe, if you're gonna have to let something go, probably carbonyl, and sulfhydro. But all the rest of these are very important. Uh, you're gonna need to know them. It's, it's worth your time. You'll, you'll, it, they will be tested in my class. You'll, it will help you for the rest of the year if you get to know these really well. And honestly, you could probably get away with not knowing methyl groups as well, but certainly hydroxide car uh, carboxyl amino and phosphate you should know without a doubt in fact not this week not this week's lab but next week's activity you will be building using this yes you know about, you know about, skin, right? about what skin and what skin cells, skin cells yeah Yeah, what do you want to know? Your body does uses something called mitosis and cell division through mitosis to replicate, make more cells. And until until it's able to, it creates a scab, which is uh, platelets or some clotting factor that builds a scab over, protecting itself. Unfortunately, what your cells do a lot of times, depending on uh, how much support they have, they could form what's called scar tissue which means they don't, the scar tissue doesn't have sweat glands. It, it has a lot of parts that are missing because they have to build it so quickly. Depends on how much support you have. All right, so please, you have a big project to do. You have, oh, are you okay? You have a big project to do. You have, you have graphs to, uh, to build. You have tables to build for, for, for uh, Thursday's lab. If you don't do all that, it's not going to be a good day for your grade when uh, the lab reports do. If you do all the, look, yeah, read, read the syllabus. Read the syllabus. I wrote it all in there for you. I'm here during 4th, 6th, and after school today if you need me. All right, guys, have a good day. I appreciate you. Thank you. Wait, say so that? The ones I took over the lectures during the summer. Yeah, you can do whatever you want, yeah. Does, it, does this help? Do you understand what's going on, all this stuff we're talking about? Yes. All right, I'm glad. If you ever, if you ever find like I could do better, just let me know. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Yeah. Are you staying after school?